sleep. I still see 12, in the, 12 people in the waiting room on my end. Raul Arroyo in the building. All right. So. Is everyone good. out of the waiting room? Yes. So, one second. Okay. All right. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Police Reform Reinvention Collective Group Meeting 5. Um, I'm going to start with a quick roll call and then we will pass it over to Sim. So let's start with uh, Raul Royo. Carrie Blakely. Here. Dr. Jose Canario. Here. Myself, John Cromarty. Here. Raul Fuentes. Here. Alana Overstreet Gibson. Here. Lou will not be joining us today. Um, Daniel Hickey. Here. Uh, Teresa Johnson. Oops, here. Oh, there she is. There you go, Sim. I just said I needed your energy. I'm so happy you're here, Teresa. All right. <laughs> Leanne Lapp. Here. Daniel Mallard. I see Lucille. I don't know oh, where'd she go. I see her on there. Uh, Jim Ritz. Here. Richard Thomas. I don't see him yet. Uh, Lieutenant Matt Valeni. Here. Steve Valentino. Here. And Sim Covington. Uh, happily here. So good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Dr. Sim Covington. I primarily serve as the Chief Diversity Officer at Finger Lakes Community College, and I'm very humbled to be here tonight as a facilitator for this discussion. I'm going to politely request that Erica please pull up the slides of the individuals who are serving on uh, the collaborative, uh, the collective rather, and then I'm going to actually call out your name and just ask you to introduce yourself to the greater audience. Um, so Erica, let me know when you're ready. Okay. Raul Arroyo, if you can please introduce to yourself to our individuals who are here virtually. Good evening, everyone. My name is Raul Arroyo. I uh, am a Geneva police officer for 15 years. This is my eighth year on the force as a uh, school resource officer. Happily married for 30 plus years. And a Niners fan, diehard fan, longer than Peel Hickey's been alive. And I'll leave it at that. Raul, thank you very much. Can we please go to the next slide? Carrie Blakely. Hi, I'm Carrie Blakely. I'm the conflict defender for Ontario County. Um, happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next slide, please. Jose. Hi. Uh... I'm Dr. Jose Canario, the Chief Medical Officer for Finger Lakes Community Health, as well as the President of the Board of Education for Geneva Central School District. I'm very honored to have been asked to be on this board. And looking forward to doing some meaningful work. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next slide, please, Erica. So hi, I'm Erica Collins. Um, I am currently with the City of Geneva City Manager's Office. Um, I am very happy to be here. I know we've done introductions, um, so we kind of have the bios available for everyone. And it's exciting to see the collective group and just another initiative of uh, peeling the onion on the changes we wish to see in the city. Thank you very much. Next slide, please. Raul Fuentes. Um, Hi, my name is uh, Raul Fuentes. I'm uh, the pastor of Deliverware Church. I am also the CEO of Creative Touch Barbershop. I've been in the city of Geneva since 2001. I am uh, very active in the, in the community and all that and just love to help. Uh, everything else speaks for itself. Thank you very much. Next slide, please. Alana. Hi, everybody. My name is Alana Overstreet Gibson. I was born and raised here in Geneva, New York. I am the Assistant Executive Director of the Boys and Girls Club of Geneva, but I am here representing the People's Peaceful Protest, 
Um, I am a Geneva High School grad and also a Hobart and Wayne Smith grad. Thank you very much. Next slide, please. Lou Gard is not here. We're going to move on to Daniel Hickey. I graduated Geneva High in 2013. I've been with the Geneva Police Department for four years. Um, went to St. John Fisher College. And that's about it. Thank you, Daniel. Next slide, please. Teresa Johnson. Hi, my name is Teresa Johnson. I'm a reverend at Mount Olive Missionary Baptist Church. I belong to several organizations um, around the city and I'm glad to be here. <laughs> and we are very happy that you are here. Leanne Lapp, please. Sorry, I couldn't find the unmute. Um, I'm Leanne Lapp, the Ontario County Public Defender. Um, thank you for having me here tonight and thank you to everyone out there who's uh, taking the time to join us. Thank you, next slide. Lucille Mallard. Lucille Mallard. I don't know if she's connecting right now. Uh, let's go on to the next slide. No problem. And then we'll go back. Uh, Jim Ritz. I, I'm, I'm uh, fortunate as heck to follow Lucille Mallard because she's one of the greatest people I've ever met one of the most genuine people I've ever met. I'm the district attorney in Ontario County. I've been with the elected DA since 2018. I've been with the office um, since 1999. So um, proud to be here and, and excited to be a part of this collaborative, especially the Geneva Collaborative. Thank you very much. Next slide, please. Richard Thomas, I don't think he's here yet. Is Richard here yet? I wanna give space. Okay, next slide, please. Matt Valenti. Hi, I'm Matt Valenti. I'm a lieutenant with the Geneva Police Department in charge of the detective unit. I've been a police officer since uh, February 2002, and I was promoted to a lieutenant in 2015. I've been uh, in and out of Geneva since 2002 as a resident. I'm currently back in Geneva as a resident and proud to be here. Next slide, please. Stephen Valentino. Thank you very much. I'm Steve Valentino. I'm mayor of the city of Geneva. I've been fortunate enough to be on council for over 17 years, so I'm probably the old guy here. Uh, I'm the one that wears rose-colored glass, rose -colored glasses about the city of Geneva. I love this city, and I want to continue to make it the best city in the area. So I, I kind of reach out to Jim Ritz saying thank you for wanting to be with the Geneva group because Geneva is the best, no doubt about it. And I appreciate being part of this group all together. Um, thank you very much. Thank you very much. And myself, uh, very quickly, so once again, my name is Dr. Sam Covington Jr. I'm originally from Brooklyn, New York, relocated upstate for the beginning of my undergraduate and graduate education. I have been working for the State University of New York, Finger Lakes Community College is my fourth institution, and I've been serving as the Chief Diversity Officer since January of 2018. So uh, if we can actually close the slides, thank you very much. And we do have somebody else in the waiting room at this time. <laughs> You can admit them. All right, let's see. I'm going to just briefly read a script to introduce everyone to um, our event tonight. We want to take the time, once again, with a high level of humility to thank individuals who are a part of the Geneva community for being here. I'm going to get right into the script, and then I'm going to go ahead and open up the floor. Can everyone hear me? Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Here's my script. Good evening, everyone. Please be advised that as a facilitator for this evening's public forum, my goal is to continue the practice of transparency and communication embedded in the Geneva Police Reform and Reinventive Collective. As a diverse group of individuals committed to this charge, since our inception, we have been able to effectively engage in meaningful dialogue, focus on, focus on a sincere commitment to the city of Geneva in a revision of law enforcement policy and practice as required by the, director, by the directive from the governor of New York State. In addition to this evening, we will be hosting another public forum on the evening of November 17th, 2020, and community members are also welcome to submit information on the City of Geneva website. Recognizing that people see life through the lens of their experience, we are dedicated to creating a space that supports the positionality 
and intersectionality of all stakeholders. As diversity includes all aspects of human difference, our correspondence as a collective has allowed for genuine discussions on differences in this world arising from systematic social injustice. Given the aforementioned, as we enter this virtual space tonight, we want to hear from you. So our final product is Data Inform. We welcome feedback from community members who reflect the difference in age, ethnicity, race, gender, gender expression. Hold on, you guys disappeared, and I apologize. Gender expression, gender identity, language, learning preference, mental and physical ability, national origin, religion, sexual orientation, socioeconomic status, status as a veteran, and beyond. Focused on equity, tonight's platform is our heartfelt effort to provide equal opportunity and access for the contributions of those who have interactions with the Geneva Police Department, both positive and negative. Taking historical context into consideration, as facilitator, it is my duty to inform everyone that we will be navigating this evening's event with a sense of decorum committed to listening and learning. Wanting those who contribute to speak their truth, it's important to recognize that the delivery of such content necessitates open communication from the community, as well as etiquette to ensure that the message is fully received by all collective member group members. As several members of this collective has successfully orchestrated similar forms for other police reform initiatives, I feel the need to communicate that this evening, that this evening's event is not about us sharing. This isn't about us sharing. This is about our opportunity to hear from you as a community. Once again, it's not about us sharing. We, we genuinely wanna hear from you as a community. If at any time the discourse during this evening's events crosses the line into disrespectful or counterproductive communication, please be advised that individuals will be removed from the virtual space accordingly. Given our commitment to all community members, it is imperative to comprehend that we are dedicated to dialogue. And I share this information to ensure that everyone is fully informed to move this process forward in a productive manner. To this end, this evening, we look forward to your contribution in order to most effectively understand the current perspectives of community's relationship with the City of Geneva Police Department. As we are cognizant of our time together this evening, we have set initially, I would say initially, depending on how many people come, a three, a three minute parameter, but that's flexible depending on how many people show up tonight in order to leave space for the contribution to others. In addition to, the, in addition to opening your mic, please feel free to use the chat feature. Let me make sure we have that, hold on. Do we even have a chat feature? I don't think I see one. So I think people are just gonna have to open their mic, but that's okay. Um, and at this time, it is my humble honor to open the floor for our first public forum for this collective. So once again, uh, I'm excited. I'm excited, I'm, 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 I'm full of energy. Um, I know there's been some things going on in Geneva and the bottom line is this, we here, we showed up and the floor is now open. Is there someone who would like to talk about their experience? I'm, I'm going to read one that came in just to start. Um, sure. And <clears throat> the, this one is from a Ward 4 resident named Peter Gelati. Um, and Peter states, I have had a few, a few opportunities of, to experience GPD law enforcement. I have had two DWIs in my past 65 years. Both times the GPD treated me with respect. I had no problems with them because I knew I was wrong and owned up to my huge error in judgment. Luckily, no one was injured either time. They were also instrumental in bringing a young man to justice for attacking my son. That attack cost my son sight in his eye. I have known many GPD officers over the years. I have never heard of any mistreatment with anyone that I have known when they broke the law or needed assistance. We need to let the GPD chief lead the charge in ridding our department of any officers that show any signs of using unnecessary force or verbal harassments to any citizen. I urge this committee to hear all sides, not just those who yell the loudest. I urge this committee to control these open forms so they don't turn into a witch hunt. We have already seen signs of this on display by residents influenced by radical groups within our HWS colleges, along with our council members. Respectfully submitted, Peter Gelati. 
Peter, thank you very much for your contribution. Obviously, because that was sent via email, we have a uh, written, written record of that. Um, Erica, I'm assuming also as people are sharing verbally tonight, you're gonna make sure, well, it's recorded, but I'm okay. sure that you- So it is recorded and it's also, I will be um, noting the names because obviously some of the people that signed up, um, obviously there's more than that signed up. And so I do ask that when people do open up their mics to comment, um, I do ask that they uh, say, state their name um, and if they are resident or not and what ward. Um, I do have one more. And this is from Michelle Hill. She is a Ward 3 resident. Um, thank you for the information. As I'm not able to attend all the meetings tonight, I'd like to comment. As a resident of Ward 3, close to downtown and the colleges, both Tim and I feel we should be represented. There is, such, there is much police presence in our area and should be enough to solidify representation of the lower third ward. We appreciate the great work of the Geneva PD and understand the challenges they face on each call. Both my husband, husband and I have dedicated our careers to working in the field of crisis intervention and spent our off time coaching youth of Geneva over the last 28 years and have positive interactions with the GPD. Please keep us informed about citywide representation and inclusion. Thank you, Michelle Hill. Uh, thank you very much. I do want to make a little bit of a caveat to your last request. Um, and I would say that I would have people share their name and their ward if they see fit, because you may have some people who might want to contribute, but continue to have their level of anonymity. So I just want to put that out there. Uh, with that being said, the floor is now open. Do we have any takers? Anyone wants to share their experience with Geneva Police Department, whether positive or negative? Uh, I'd like to speak if, if I can turn my video on. Uh, yes, you can. Please do. And we have right. you identified as Charles King. Thank you. Yes. Hi. Hi, I'm Charles King. I've lived in Geneva for 19 years. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, okay. Um, I've called 911 about a dozen times in those 19 years. Some of those were a power line down or a sick looking raccoon stumbling around in the daytime. But most of my calls we're in 2018 when one of my children was in a mental health crisis while he was on the wrong medication for anxiety. Officer Arroyo was his SRO at GMS at the time and always handled him very gently and professionally in the school building. Thank you. Police officers in my home and the CIT team generally did a very good job in a chaotic setting during that year. Thank you. I, I do want to say that when a woman police officer was in one of the first responder cars, for whatever reason, that lowered the level of tension in this situation, maybe because it felt less to my 80 pound child like he was being tackled by a football team. It was also nice when one of the CIT officers was herself disabled, was hard of hearing and needed to read lips. That felt more like the police were part of us, were overcoming their difficulties too. One of the nicest moments in that whole terrible summer was when an officer took an extra minute after my wife and the ambulance had gone to Strong just to put his hand on my shoulder and ask if I was gonna be okay. Reaching out is good. On the flip side, there was one time after a successful de-escalization where we didn't need an ambulance that an officer acted strangely bored and agitated when my son was on the brink of falling asleep. And during another visit, one officer picked an arguably unwise moment to become physically intimidating, but by and large, you kept the peace, and I thank you. I'm happy to report that my son is in a great school this year and is on track to make the honor roll for the first time. And you guys were part of helping that happen. I respect the police. I don't worship the police, but I respect them. Respect is a complicated word because it has at least three components, past experience, cultural iconography and apprehension or fear. Because of my background, my level of trust, my cultural assumptions and apprehensions are quite different from other people's in my neighborhood. Two of my children are Asian. They are treated differently in the schools. Kids whisper racial slurs at them in the hallways, repeatedly tagging them as different when the teachers can't hear. They call them names behind their backs. They've been body shamed for normal, attractive facial features. They've had rocks thrown at their backs. One has been bitten on the back. It's often to their backs, right? Uh, Geneva can be an upsetting place for a kid who looks different, even down at West Street School. Once I was painting the front of my house and a man about my age came to my yard and asked me if I'd be willing to give him a couple of bucks to help. 
A young police officer arrived a few minutes later into the conversation and started making fun of the man's name. I think he had the same name as a Motown singer. The officer then said he was just busting his chops, which is maybe a mildly threatening microaggression. And the officer asked him to move along because he'd gotten a complaint from someone down the street. I made a point of saying the man was welcome on my property, that I hadn't made the complaint, but the officer said he needed to ask the gentleman to move along, and he trailed him out of Washington Heights down toward Exchange Street. As far as I know, there may have been a valid complaint about this individual based on what he'd done earlier that day, but I was left with a bad taste in my mouth because of how the officer had made fun of his name, how he'd used those rough words to talk down to him, and how it felt like he was just being swept back to the east side of the city. I have not mentioned this yet, but you've probably assumed at this point that the man was black. He was. The officers in this working group have said some really helpful and valuable things over the past several weeks. Officer Arroyo said of police officers, you need to know how to talk to someone. Officer Valenti said, if an officer is having a bad day, his or her lieutenant might ask him to go home that day. Even with the rule books and the general orders, there's a significant reliance on subjective judgment that goes into the job of policing. When we, I and others talk about an accountability board, I hope what we're talking about is avoiding an echo chamber where the police are, the, are only accountable to the police. It's important to listen to the skeptics. I respect you, but please accept me as a skeptic. Thank you. Thank you very much, Charles, okay. and thank you for speaking your truth. Um, I want to open the floor again in order for some for anyone to share um, information about their experience with the Geneva Police Department, whether positive or negative. So if anybody is having trouble with unmuting themselves, you can simply raise your, there should be a raise hand feature. Um, there is a list of people and I'm kind of just, I can just go down if we want to do that. If anybody is willing to just speak before me having to facilitate that, that would be great. Uh, based on my end, I see somebody in the waiting room. <laughs> I have someone that raised their hand. I'm going to ask him to unmute. Can you hear me? We can. Yes. Okay, um, my name is Paul D'Amico and I don't have too much interaction with the police. And uh, I want to speak as a 13 year city council person and I've observed the department receive accreditation over the years and they've been making um, ongoing improvements and it's been interesting to watch. So uh, they take a lot of pride in upgrading their department in many areas, you know, some of which have been the topic of the current city council's July agenda. There's a few things that came out of that that um, they tried to tackle. And there were a few uh, council persons who felt that um, what they were doing was part of the governor's mandate. And that's not the case. And I know that there's been some confusion. Uh, personally, I think I, I respect uh, what they've done, and what they've been able to accomplish. Um, I'll never say that there's never room for any improvement. Um, I can't speak of a, any personal interaction with them right now, uh, but I, I trust this group. Um, uh, this group here that is organized will take a professional and unbiased approach to analyzing current procedures and eventually making reasonable recommendations uh, for improvement to be passed along to the governor's office. And I think, you know, knowing what the, city, the police department does now, uh, you, you can't make improvements, I don't believe, unless you understand exactly what they do. And I, I hope that everybody takes the time to, to make that effort. Uh, and one, one part of this um, conversation that I listened to and learned of was uh, the, the use of 
um, anonymous complaints. And I, I, I really oppose, I strongly oppose the use of anonymous for uh, whatever happens uh, throughout your procedure. So um, I, I think uh, I, I'm also a bit, little bit concerned that some people use this as an opportunity in the soapbox to uh, criticize and, and attack police um, in, a, in a way that may not be appropriate. So I'll rely on the professionalism of this group to look at what's happening now with the Geneva PD and look for ways to enhance that. And reinvention, that's a pretty strong word. I, I, I think tweak is, is more accurate. So um, thanks for your time. Uh, thank you, Paul. Thank you very much for your contribution. Erica, you were gonna say something? Yep, thank you, Paul. The next person I had raised their hand was um, Michael Pinko. So I'm going to have you unmute yourself and here the floor is yours. Good, can you guys hear me? Yes. Oh, great. Hey, I, I'm sorry, I don't have anything uh, um, prepared. Uh, but uh, I, I do say I've been a resident here of uh, uh, Ward 6 for uh, approximately three years. Um, I don't have much uh, integration with the police department, although I have been very vocal about uh, the elimination of police. I have uh, been supportive of the police department. Um, and also I have been uh, threatened um, because how vocal I have been about supporting the police department by certain organizations. I think it's very important that uh, this group remains unbiased. This group remains uh, uh, without an agenda, if you will, uh, for any organization tied to any um, college or any organization uh, or political uh, agenda. It's very important that uh, this this group remains unbiased. Uh, the interaction that I have had in the past by supporting the police department have been excellent. I think they've been very hugely respectful. Um, and and um, I just got out of uh, surgery and had severe uh, back surgery. And I had some people uh, out here in front of my house at 2.30 in the morning and I contacted 911 and GPD responded immediately. Within uh, two, two minutes, there was three units there. Very hugely re uh, respectful, responsible, and respectful of the individuals that were here at two o'clock in the morning. Again, uh, I find it, uh, uh, the fact that the GPD has, has been done uh, fairly dirty with uh, certain agendas, I believe that have been out there and uh, that's why I stress the fact that this group needs to be very, very unbiased. Um, and even though there are certain people with, uh, with evidence that I seen and have that have been wanting to eliminate uh, police, uh, police members, currently wanting to eliminate police members, for what reason? And for, for we have this anonymous, um, anonymous calls that have uh, been talked to certain uh, people of the city council. And uh, those, that information has not been made public. And um, we, we're basing on uh, eliminating police officers or doing certain things for the police department in, in uh, eliminating the police department, certain individuals of the police department uh, with bogus information. It's not factual. It's not provided. We, you know, I'm not looking for people's names uh, or facts of people's names or who they're calling uh, with these anonymous complaints. But, but we can't go on, un, you know, we can't go on bogus information that uh, one individual of a city council member could be receiving all these uh, calls of, uh, of complaints. Uh, because those complaints, there is a process, and I know that the police department has a process. We have the district attorney right there. I'm sure he's part of that process. And there is a process in place that if this group continues, again, I'm glad for the unbiased and continue to stress the fact that 
uh, an unbiased position has to be taken in this group. In addition to the fact that um, we got to avoid having certain members with any kind of agenda in city council trying to eliminate police officers because of a particular agenda. And uh, again, I highly respect the, the Geneva Police Department. And I believe that the Geneva Police Department is a, an unbelievable organization. And I think just look at the city and the city will tell you itself, just drive around in the city and, and that will tell you the job that they're doing. I wanna thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Erica, did we have another hand that's up at this time? So does, do any of our public comment residents would like to uh, speak next? If you would like to raise your hand, that would be great. Or I can just continue down the list. Okay, we have Ahmad, and I'm going to ask you to unmute yourself. Hi, I'm Ahmad Whitfield, uh, founder of... Uh, Daddies Do Care, um, also part of African Americans Men's Association. Um, I work for Catholic Charities um, as an emergency assistance um, caseworker. Also, I've done drug court as well. Um, also, I am part of Success for Children in the community. And I've been a resident for all my life. Um, I've had some good interactions with the police. And I've also had bad interactions with the police. Anytime that I've done any wrongdoing, um, I've uh, stepped up to my responsibilities and um, I never gave them any hard time during that process. Um, and the reason why I uh, mentioned my credentials is because uh, it shows how one person can take a change in, back into the community. Um, and I did all those things because I wanted to speak for the community because I'm on both realms of the community as well. So again, being that said, um, I've had interactions with the police. Um, there's some police that, um, that I've dealt with and they give me respect and I give them respect as well. Um, but I've had more interactions with the police on the other side. And, and it's not only of me being in trouble, it's uh, at, in a basis as where I wouldn't so much say as a prejudice well, then again, I could go there and say that, but I'm not going to say as a prejudice, but I would basically say uh, more so um, as a my last name uh, holds a certain invalidity in this uh, community. Um, I've had situation of a case rather where at this time I didn't do what was said that was done. And in that situation, there was never an uh, investigation. There was no articles, clothing articles taken for the um, investigation. It was just the word of the person and a time. That's it. There was no other investigation. And when I was pulled over, I was with one of my friends. And this is just one of the incidents that I've um, endured. But I was pulled over with my friend coming from work on my way to the uh, um, mall. And I just heard Ahmad Whitfield, please step out of the car. So me not knowing what's going on, I'm stepping out of the car but before i even stepped out of the car guns were drawn so you know anyone that has a gun drawn on them they're gonna 
either panic or feel some type of way, like what's going on? Did What did I do for this to, to occur? So then I was told to exit the vehicle, but because the door was jammed, I had to climb through the window to get out the car. At the time I weighed like 265 and I'm in this small car, so, <laughs> but that wasn't the part that, uh, was troubling the, the the part that was troubling was that I was told if I moved um well no not that if I move not to move so I got out I put my hands up and they told me to back up slowly I backed up slowly and all the while while I'm getting arrested I was told, um, basically, when I, I asked them what was the problem, why am I being uh, arrested, they stated that I'll find out when I get to the precinct. I get to the precinct, the whole time, no one's seen anything but one individual. The individual was, through the whole time, was antagonizing, seeing you're going to prison for 25 to life, you know, and I'm not afraid to mention what case I involved because I was, um, I was, you know, found not guilty. Um, but it was a, a supposed rape case. So now while I'm being detained, an officer is saying you're going 25 to life, you're going to prison. So I'm, you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm trying to still figure out why am I here? And he said, you're going to rape, you're going to prison for rape. So now I'm like, whoa, whoa, rape. Now at this time, I'm like, you can charge me for anything else or say that I did anything else if you would like, but something like that, that's not me. Well, you're going to prison 25 to life. You're out of here. Automatically, I'm being judged by the police. And it was the the situation was so incriminating that um, even when I was released after five months, after five months of, of, you know, going through this and being judged as like I was a person, uh, a rapist. Um, and even when I was released, there were people yelling these obscene things, although I still was released. But I can literally say like being in this community and uh, trying to find ways to help the community now, because I've been in both realms, I can literally say that there's a lot of situations that I've endured. There's situations that my family has endured, the situations my friend has my friends have endured. So now what I'm striving to do is come up with ways, better ways to see what the problem is because I don't want my kids to go through what I went through as while I was growing up. There's situations where I'm walking down the street, going to work, and the officer would drive past and yo, 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 yo. I don't answer because that's not my name. That's not how I talk. Happens again to the point where I had to the officer pulled over to me in a little blue Jeep and said, yo, what's up? What's up? What's your name? And I had to say to him, I'm not any of the other people that you, you know, you go around harassing because I'm on my way to work and I want to be a citizen. And they started laughing, they just drove off. And up the street, they started antagonizing someone else. You know, so as time goes on, I wanna be a voice. I wanna be 
an individual who speaks um, on behalf of those people who are, are oppressed or have been oppressed or traumatized by the police. It, it gets saddening when a child who grows up wants to be a police officer and in time, as they begin to grow, there's points where they start saying, am I going to jail? Is the police coming to get me at three years old? When just a few months before that, that same child was putting on police officer uniform, police officers' uniforms going when he goes to the library. And being in this community, I see this a lot. Kids may wave at the police, some officers, and you know what? Um, I'm actually like, there's some officers, Officer Royal, Tap Scott, Grenier, those, those few officers, like I went to school with those two individuals and, and they're, they're cool with me and they see me, they say, how you doing? And we talk, especially Tap Scott. Um, there's other officers, older officers that's been on the force, cordial, real cordial. But there's also those ones that um, feel like that seem as though that they need to put this strong, um, aggressive side to them for situations that don't need to be escalated, which either a person is going to be um, threatened by their demeanor or they're going to feel afraid. So their approaches, when they approach people, it doesn't have to always be aggressive. When they, when there's a group of people and, you know, a lot of people, they go out and they hang with their buddies and stuff. There's been situations where it may look like I'm leading a group because I'm bigger than my friends or something like that. And I could be walking down the sidewalk and through a crowd of people. And then through that crowd of people, we get singled out. Those are just minor situations that I've been through. And as far as police leaving the force, I understand it, but more so they, I feel that they need to do more training. Uh, not so much as police being off of the force, but all of them doing a retraining because there's people, kids that don't know about the police force that need to learn that police aren't bad. They're there to protect you. But if they're giving off this image all the time and their situations and families being hurt, those people that are hurt are gonna show their children that police are bad. So now when the kids grow up, all they're gonna think in their mind is, this police is gonna get me, he's gonna arrest me, he's gonna chase me. So there needs to be a, a, a certain training and uh, to rebuild and restructure. Um, and this has been going on for so long since I've grown up. It's been going on for so long in this community. And this is a time that it, it needs to be stopped and, and, and looked at and go through a new process. Thank you for letting me have the floor. Thank you very, very, very much. Um, Erica, do we have anybody else in the docket? So anybody else like to raise their hand or should I just go down the list? Anybody else ready to speak now? Is anybody on the Zoom that would like to uh, comment? If so, please use the hand feature. I would also say for people who may not be familiar with technology, um, if you can't find the hand feature, if you can just uh, open up your mic. We wanna make sure that we're leaving ample time for people to contribute.
also, Erica, I would say I don't I don't know if there's a necessity for you to go down the list because if people can hear us, we definitely want to make this a challenge by choice to let them opt in. Some people may just come to be observers and to and to listen. So once again, the floor is open for anyone who would like to make a contribution to tonight's discussion about their experience with Geneva Police Department, whether positive or negative. Um, I definitely would like to say something, if I may. Yes, you may. Um, well, of course, uh, I've had some situations happen where, well, first of all, let me reintroduce myself. My name is Raul Fuentes. I am the uh, founder and uh, the owner of Creators Touch Barbershop. I came to the city of Geneva, um, leaving the city of Rochester due to a murder case. And I had situations happen to me in the city of Rochester that actually caused me to have a, a, a mindset to have a changed life. Granted, I didn't grow up the riches or nothing like that. So I had very poor estates. Uh, I've had things happen to me that, you know, I, I wouldn't wish any young man to go through. But it led me to come to the city of Geneva. Uh, the city of Geneva to me has been a pull. I believe God has brought me here. Uh, I'm also a pastor of Delivering Word Church. I started the ministry back in 2012 with the help of the Lord and things have been developing since. May I continue? Okay. Um, I've worked in barbers. I've been a barber for since I was 13 years old. I'm 43 right now. Uh, I love barbering. Uh, I think barbering is, it's my life. It's the tool that I, I love using. Uh, to make a long story short, I didn't want to change my life from the lifestyle that I had in Rochester. Granted, I wasn't thinking right. I didn't have a father figure as, as, as often as some would of. And uh, my, the streets were my raising ground. I had a mother that worked hard. She ended up becoming an HIV case manager. She ended up becoming somebody. And, and granted, not having a father there, it was, it was more or less a disappointing time because I kind of felt like I was letting my mom down. So, and at the age of 22, I called up my murder case and I looked to leave the city of Rochester to go to the city of Geneva to start a new life. Having said that, I had uh, a mindset to want to make a difference for myself, <laughs> not for anybody else. And I started a barbershop uh, called Creative Touch after I went through the procedure of having a two-year experience so that way I could have my master's and all that. I went through a lot of drama throughout getting my, my, uh, my apprenticeship. I uh, got fired out of three barbershops. <laughs> And uh, until I got my own, I, I am not saying that any officer should lose his job. I know Officer Hickey, Tap Scott, you know, uh, and even some of the other good brothers that are there. They come to a barbershop, detectives and everything else, they get a haircut. Um, I've known Hickey for a long time when he had a hairline, you know what I'm saying? And, <laughs> and <laughs> Wait, yeah. wait, wait, hold on now, hold on. <laughs> hold on, we said we're gonna oh. play nice, Raul. <laughs> and so, and so, and so, I've, I've gotten to know Dan and before he became an officer. But I can't say that for all the rest of the officers when I was going through. Ahmad Whitfield actually was one of my barbers at, at one present time. Uh, and I helped, you know, train him and other barbers throughout the city of Geneva. Wayne County and all of that stuff. And when I started my business, I started my business in 2003. Um, it developed to 2004. I ended up uh, starting in, uh, opening up a barbershop down on uh, Waterloo, Border City Road. And my, my uh, customers that used to come see me at the other barbershops would walk or drive to over there. So, so people would, you know, 
flap their mouth, excuse me, and just say things that's just a little off the I said, well, you know what? I'm gonna give them something to talk about. I'm gonna open up in the city of Geneva and I'm gonna and I'm gonna move forward with that. So I went and opened up a barbershop, rented from Bob Stivers. Good man, I love Stivers. But in that building right there, I had the most worst experience with the city of Geneva when it come down to law enforcement. Uh, I've had uh, illegal searches where they didn't have no warrant or nothing like that, where they went downstairs looking for some of my customers and all that. Now, granted, I'm, I'm a businessman. I don't care about what people do outside of the barbershop. That's their business. You know, uh, I've had illegal searches where they go downstairs and look for somebody that they've been looking for for a couple of weeks or whatever the case might be. I've had some of my customers being pulled over and stated that, you know, harassed about coming to the barbershop. And one thing that they mentioned constantly was, we know you brought drugs from the barbershop. Where are they? Please tell us where they're at. Uh, I've had good friends, developed good friends throughout like uh, the city and all of that. Some, some were bank tellers and everything else. And one of the bank tellers was actually across the street from the barbershop that I'm in now. I uh, used to work for the bank across the street and she would tell me that they had a camera upstairs facing the barbershop because they wanted to patrol my barbershop. And it got to be so bad that I, I, everywhere I went to, whether it was to the diner or whether it was to the store or anything like that, it almost made me believe that I was defeated and things were just bad. Uh, granted, I come to this little town and I come from a, a city that's a quarter of a mil plus, and I come to a town that's maybe 15, 20,000, 30,000 the most, whatever the case might be, and, and I'm going through more persecution in that little town than what I did in the big city. Uh, that didn't stop me, though, because I didn't come to the city of Geneva to please nobody. Uh, it actually allowed me to go through, uh, I got acquitted of murder charges in 2003, January 6th, of 2003, uh, gave my life to the Lord, got called to the ministry, started to develop and all that. And I really kept my focus on developing my character because I, it got so bad that some, one of my barbers was telling me that, hey, listen, you know, you're all over Finger Lakes 1. I didn't know what Finger Lakes 1 was. I didn't have no idea what Finger Lakes 1 was. And he gave me the record of the paperwork, I still have it still to this day. And, and it's a grateful moment to me because it taught me that in spite of whatever anybody says about me, I can still hold my head up high and thank the Lord that I have the opportunity and the integrity to go on ahead and know that I'm not doing what I've been accused of. For that, for that, it actually caused the tables to be turned. And I thank God for allowing me to have a good relationship with the community and all of that stuff. Because it wasn't like that in the beginning. But he, the Lord, caused people to look at me different. And after I got acquitted from murder charges, I got a clean slate. My life began to change completely. I did not care about pleasing anybody. But I still was targeted. I, I, I would be at the diner and I'd hear different things about my name all of that stuff, the barbershop, the barbershop, number of drug dealers, you know, and one of the things that really blew my mind was this statement that was in Finger Lakes 1 that says, what do you get when you drive down Seneca Street? I, 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 it's in my mind, like bombed in my mind. What do you get when you drive down Seneca Street, make a left on Exchange Street, stop at the light on Castle Street and Exchange, what do you get? A barbershop with barbers who are outside on their cell phones instead of cutting hair in their barbershop, they're on their cell phones. Are they setting up drug deals? And I told my barber, I said, you know what? If it's not right, then don't get worked up over something that's wrong. Don't worry about it. Let's just keep cutting hair. And I went through the whole ordeal and I went from one shop to the other shop. I must have had like four or five barbershops in the city of Geneva. <laughs> So my landlord now, which is Dave Flinger, I thank God for him. He specifically said, you know, I, because I know you, Rob, I know where your heart's at. I now have, and I, this is not to brag about what I do, but I thank God for the opportunity to develop in the city of Geneva so that way the people without any grants, 
are you here without any grants, entrepreneur grants, or anything like that? I thank God for the grants that I've gotten previously due to the COVID. But I'm talking about to develop, move forward without anybody, without any loan or anything like that. The Lord literally calls me to develop right in the very presence of everyone who persecuted me. Some of the officers that were there previously are not there now. I don't know what they're doing. My prayers and thoughts and, and love goes out to them. I don't wish bad for no one. You know what I'm saying? I just want to clarify that. But at the same time, I want you to understand that when you least expect that you're not, or let's say, not hurting anyone, your words or actions will destroy everyone. And if they don't have a hard gear to move them forward, it will literally destroy anyone. Now, I'm not taking this platform to demolish nobody because just as well as there's a uh, perversion in, in, the, in the police officers, there's perversion in, in pastors, priests, there's perversion in up, uh, community uh, uh, and high, higher ups and, and even in the streets. So, but I do want to take this platform to say that I had both sides of the spectrum. And I thank God that now is when I have gained the respect from the city and from the officers and all that. Like, you know, I thank God for Mike Tapscott. That brother is like, he's like a brother to us. He comes to the barbershop, hey, you know what I'm saying? And that's important to me, you know, and I, and I, I, I'm not saying this to defame the police officers because I want uh, my intent from the very beginning before I became a barber was to be a police officer because I believe in treating people right. And so I thank you for this platform. I thank you for this time frame. I thank you for allowing, for even calling me to even be worthy to be, you know, uh, right next to you guys to make these type uh, of decisions. And, and I want to say this before I close out. I have the best relationship right now with the city of Geneva, the, the police officers, they drive by, they beat their horn and all of that stuff. You know, when they have parades and everything else, they check my shop, they make sure everything's all set. I've had numerous calls to come because it was in an accident where the doors have been left unlocked. So I do thank God for them. I thank God for the group now. And so I, I think that some of the group now might be reaping what was established previously. And so I'm careful what I say and how I say it, but I, and I say it with a lot of love and a lot of respect. Thank you very much for this time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I just want to politely do a time check on my computer. It's indicating to me that the time is now 7.33. We would like to continue to keep the floor open. We understand that people sometime um, take some, some time to warm up to listen, they wanna hear, but we wanna keep the floor open for anyone who would like to share about their experience with Geneva Police Department, whether positive or negative. What has been a common practice um, uh, for full transparency, what has been a common practice typically if we have dead air is that I typically would fill the time with individuals who are serving on the collective, uh, giving them the platform to share. But I do wanna do this a little bit different tonight. And I just want us, for the individuals who are here, I want us to practice a little bit of patience, if you don't mind. I'm talking to the individuals on the collective. Um, I don't want us to necessarily perceive it as dead air. Uh, that's my words. Um, but more so to give people some time just in case, you know, people are thinking, you know, uh, people process differently. So once again, we just want to keep the floor open just in case anyone from the public would like to share about their experience with uh, Geneva Police Department. For the individuals who have taken time to share tonight, uh, we definitely want to thank you for speaking your truth. Um, Erica, is there anyone with their hand raised at this time? I don't have any, but uh, Dr. Canary, you had your hand raised, correct? I did, but I mean, obviously, I would uh, defer to any of the uh, community members first. So, just, nope, the know. floor is yours. Okay. Um, so, first of all, you know, um, speaking as an uh, as an individual, as a citizen of Geneva, who has been here for 12, 13 years, um, and when you said that, you know, uh, experience. Uh, with the Geneva Police Department, um, that was not the first thing that came to mind when I had an, uh, 
a not so good experience with, uh, with the police department. Um, <clears throat> but in, you know, in looking back, um, I have to say that um, it, it would be hard to say that um, overall, um, I think just with anything, um, there is some implicit bias and we have talked about that before uh, in some of our other forums. Um, I would have to say that the, the couple, two experiences that I've had uh, that were negative, um, which are, when I, when I say two, compared to the multiple excellent experiences that I've had um, with the police department, but the two, if I was gonna bring them up was, and one of them kind of just, uh, it keeps shining a light on on, on my negativity, I guess. But it was, uh, you know, I was on call um, in Penyan and I was coming home and it was late. And I, I drove a, a, a not so good looking car at the time, a little white uh, Hyundai. And as I turned up Castle Street, um, you know, the lights turned up behind me and I got stopped and I wasn't really sure why. And, uh, and this was, I would have to say about eight, 10 years ago when I, when I first got here. Um, and uh, I, you know, I asked and they're like, well, your, your brights were on. I'm like, well, they're not on. I'm like, well, you, you flashed your brights at me. I'm like, yeah, I don't think I did. And then they asked me, you know, well, where are you coming from? Who are you? You know, I had to explain and I answered all the questions. And then at the very end, they're like, well, just get it checked. And, you know, and I'm like, well, is it because I drive, you know, a crappy looking car? Is it because, you know, I'm on a certain part of the, uh, a certain part of town that they stopped me? Were they looking for somebody? Is it because, um, you know, I'm Hispanic and brown? I, I don't know. And all those things kept going through my head. But I, you know, you keep your head down um, and you try to do what's good. And I think over the years, um, I have developed some uh, good relationships um, throughout the community, especially um, with you know certain officers. Um, if we're talking about the police, um, but I do think that um, there is a little bit of bias if you're in certain places at certain times, um, and I and I think that. Uh, we are turning the corner on that by shedding light on all of this. Um, I, you know, I have nothing but respect for the job that officers have to do because they have to put up with a lot. Um, but it would be, it's like me saying, I understand what it's like to give birth. I don't know. I don't understand. I'm a man. I'm not a woman. I will never give birth. I'm not a police officer. And I don't know what they go through and, and the trials and tribulations and the dangers that they have to go through on an everyday basis. So, um, you know, I just wanted to put it out there that um, even though, you know, I'm, I'm a highly educated individual and, you know, I try to do everything by the book, there's always, I have a feeling in the back of my mind that there's always gonna be a possibility that I may be misunderstood just because of where I am, uh, what I look like and, and things like that. And it's hard for other people to understand that. And I guess I think that's all that, you know, personally, and I'm just talking from my own, uh, you know, as Jose Canario, um, that, um, that that's what I think some people need to understand um, is that it is a little bit difficult, but at the same time, we can't take it personally and we have to try to make a change versus being angry about it. And, you know, I like what uh, Raul said, you know, and it takes time and he has gotten to a point now where, um, you know, the acceptance is there, and I think that um, it's possible, and I, I, that's all I have to say, really, is that I, I think we're doing good work here by bringing, you know, shedding light on all this. Um, I thoroughly think that the police department, oh, and then one more thing while I'm on my soapbox, right, um, is, you know, um, I think the police have to do a lot of counseling um, in this day and age. And I think the CIT is the is really beneficial for the police department to have their officers trained in this. And whether you know you think that uh, you know I don't know the ratios of other you know uh, communities and all that, but I think we really need to take into consideration um, that mental health aspect and training and possibly bringing on uh, mental health providers uh, on some level to the department or doing the training, which I have seen so far as being quite effective with the CIT for the police officers. Um, thank you. Thank you. Uh, we want to continue to keep the floor open. The time now is 740. And when I say the time check is just to keep everyone aware, it's not to rush anyone. <laughs> um, 
but we want to make sure that people are fully aware that we are here to listen. Is there anybody in our participants that would like to share, raise their hand, or just open up your mic? Steve Valentino. Sam, I, I'm, I'm only gonna say that, um, well, I'll say a lot, but I'm only gonna say I really, I'm here to hear Listen, not hear, listen. Listen is extremely different than hearing. And um, I'm, I'm curious to hear from the community. And it's not, if it's not just tonight, it's as we move forward, because um, I can be a talker and, and I have a tough time with dead space, dead space and silence. Um, it's, it's not one of my, um, my, my traits of being able to deal with that. So I can fill this dead space. I'm going to be quiet for a minute because I really want to hear and listen to the community. But uh, if you're looking for a GPD experience from say 1970 to 2020, I have a little fill in that I'd be happy to, to apply, but I'm going to, I'm going to be quiet for a minute. <laughs> now, hold on, Steve, hold on. <laughs> I, I appreciate the fact that you about to hit us with this history lesson. <laughs> I so appreciate the fact that you about to hit us with this history lesson. <laughs> I, mind you, mind you, and, and on a serious note, though I like to laugh at everything, I do appreciate the fact that you can hit us with this history lesson because by default of the time that you've spent in the city of Geneva, you've probably had the opportunity to see things from many different um, lenses. But yes, I do agree with you. Let's continue to keep it open for the public first uh, to see if anyone would like to share. They want to hear the mayor expose themselves they will <laughs> so once again we want to keep the floor open for anyone who would like to share at this time we are great oh and i i also want to say that we greatly appreciate you taking time out of your day to be here whether that's to listen or even contribute we sincerely mean that as we work together as a collective we really want to hear your voice um, as we move this process forward, the information that you share can help inform um, our process as we move forward together as a group, right? So once again, whether positive or negative, uh, just to reinstate that there's also a place online on the Geneva website for individuals who may not necessarily feel comfortable sharing tonight. I do want to reiterate once again also that next week we're going to be having the same event um, we'll probably orchestrate it the same format. Um, for those of you who were here tonight, when you join us next week, if you decide to do that, we do ask your patience as we go through the introductions again, because we want to make sure that we follow everything just in case uh, we have newcomers next week, right? So we want to do due diligence um, and have the fan, the fan equitable distribution of our practice. Um, <coughs> excuse me. <laughs> Once again, I wanna reiterate that the floor is now open for anyone who would like to share about their experience with Geneva Police Department, um, whether positive or negative. I think while we wait, we can hear the history lesson if we wanna do that. Steve, the floor is yours. Erica, Erica, you're gonna get me in trouble, huh? <laughs> so listen, it, it spans 50 years, and, and times have changed, and that I think that's my point. Is as as the the culture of our our city and our nation has changed, the police department has changed throughout time. And I can remember back in, in my younger years, um, being chased down, riding a dirt bike down the street that I shouldn't have to um, recent times, uh, you know, people will tell stories about the city of Geneva and, and when I grew up, well, there was Finks and there's, there's stories about how things evolved and, and how um, as teenagers, we went through certain aspects of our, our growing upness. And, you know, and I think the biggest thing for me to put everything into perspective is, is what the officers have said about having dialogue having that conversation. So 
the threat for me when I was young was to call my parents. And to me, you, you could throw me in jail and throw away the key. Don't call mom and dad because, um, you know, that was, that was the, the rule for me. It was, you know, you call mom and dad and I'm in real trouble. You, you throw me in a jail cell maybe. And I didn't think that was that, that bad. So for me to, to go through from 1970 till 1978, when I went in the service and the interesting thing was I got in enough trouble throughout those years that when I was at basic training, um, a call came over the police scanner from my, my mother's neighbor and said, Steve's being chased in the car. And my mom says, impossible. He's in basic training in South Carolina. Um, so, and people look at, you know, in my position as mayor at this point in, in multiple terms and city council, you know, I did a lot of wrong things. And Raul, you know, I, I, I commend you for bringing your stories forward. As we grow up from, from adolescence into adulthood, we interact with the community. And that, that is extremely important. And how we do that is, is how we evolve as individuals and how we, how we set the stage. And I commend those, those police officers who would grab me by the back of the neck and say, you better straighten your butt up. Um, and, and me listening, otherwise I'll call my parents and I commend my parents. I can't thank them enough for everything they've done for me in my life. The, the challenge is to mature and grow and do the responsible thing in life. And so what I've seen with the Geneva Police Department is, is way different in 1970 than I see in 2020. And, and I commend Chief Pasolacqua and I commend the officers that are sitting here. Um, Officer Arroyo, uh, my, my girlfriend has triplets and, and they're in the high school now. And they can't talk highly enough about your interaction in the school system. To me, that is the example of GPD and how it interacts with the youth of the community and how that can change the dynamics as the youth grows, as I did, from that point into adulthood. And that responsibility and that character you need to carry forward, that character is so important. And the dynamics of just a family unit has changed from 1970 to 2020. And to me, you know, that might be the basis of, of how we change things moving forward. And so when, when I talk about police and policies and procedures, I, I feel confident that our current police chief and the current staff in the police department are doing what they need to do. Are there opportunities for reform and change and police and policy procedures? Yes. We, we got to look at them on a daily basis because those, those are important in how we can change how society grows and gets better instead of how society gets divided and creates all these challenges. And Eric, I know I'm disappointing you because I'm not getting into specifics. And one day I can have that conversation with anybody. I'm, I'm very open and honest about how my life has been. I don't have that problem, but I don't want to bore the audience. But my, my, my takeaway is society has changed. Policing has changed. Our, our national politics are so divided. And, I'm, and I hope this group is looking for the opportunity on how to bring that together, how to create the changes that bring us together as a community, bring us together in the policing and the policy. And um, Dr. Canario talked about some specific things that are really important with the GPD. We need, to, we need to be able to support our policies and our procedures and our policing to get better at how we interact with the community. And I think that's what we're all about here. And I think that's extremely important. So I hope that dialogue continues to happen with the community where we get that input on how to make it better. Because I don't think any of us are experts. Maybe Dr. Covington is. Um, I have a lot to learn. And I'm looking forward to making life better for the citizens of Geneva. So I'll, I'll stop there. I'll get off my, my soapbox. If anybody wants specifics, I'm always open to have that conversation. Thank you very much for your contribution. The time is now 7.50. I just want us to have a little bit of patience and continue to keep the floor open, just in case anyone else would like to share about their experience with Geneva Police Department, whether positive or negative. I had a lot to learn and I'm looking forward to making those better for the citizens. So I'll stop there, I'll get off my, my soapbox. 
thank you very much for your contribution. The time is now 7.50. I just want us to have a little bit of patience. What we're hearing is feedback from somebody else who seems like they're recording and it's a little bit on a delay, but I've, I had the opportunity to mute them. Once again, we have the floor open for anyone who would like to share at this time about their experience with Geneva Police Department. Um, Michael? I saw your hand raised. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Sim, for uh, to to um, pick up on some of the dead space, maybe would be helpful. Just a comment would be helpful to uh, give the 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 group, the audience, uh, especially the community, um, uh, a summary of the intent of this organization and how it will flow together with uh, what. Uh, city council is doing uh, with the police department and the PAB, uh, how this is to, to integrate with that. And, and I, th I think that would help the community understand the intent of this organization. Thank you very much. So I would say that the intent of this organization, one, it doesn't rest on me alone. So if I miss anything, anyone else in the collective who would like to chime in, you're more than welcome to. But given the charge from the governor of the state, the intent of this organization is to work together in order to review policies and practices that are embedded in the Geneva Police Department and make um, recommendations, um, recommendations around reform that is going to uh, be embedded in creating a more just and equitable society for everyone in the city of Geneva. Once we make those recommendations, um, it's going to go to city council um, and then move on to the next phase of that process. But is there anything else that I'm missing? Because I know something you asked about was the PAB um, and I'm not well versed on how that's going to uh, be a part of this process. Is there anyone else who would like to contribute at this time? So the PAB um, is a separate entity from the Police Reform Collective Group. Um, given Sim, your definition of what is happening in the collective group um, based off of Executive Order 203. The PAB um, has been is going through with council and they are um, taking recommendations from our city attorney and working together to finalize what that scope looks like. The PAB, the police, for those that aren't aware, is the police accountability board that um, has been brought forward to form here in the city of Geneva. Um, I will, I don't like to put you on the spot, but I'm going to pass it over to the mayor because he is actively um, serving with the council to work on that um, PAB. But to answer your question, Michael, these are two separate entities, but they all fun fall under the umbrella of the police reform and um, collaboration happening nationwide. Steve, is there anything you'd like to contribute about the PAB? Sure. Um, in July, we, there was a vote taken by city council and six resolutions were passed and one of them was for the PAB to be implemented. Uh, we've, we've taken that from, um, and Alana knows very well, we've taken it from the people's people protest uh, local law. And we've been working on that, going through it step by step with input from a variety of different legal aspects and a variety from the community. We are, I think it's 15 15, there's 17 different elements that we're looking at and we're um, just past 10. And then Thursday night, we will continue to go through it to 17. And the goal is to implement a, uh, a police accountability board that um, is reflective of what the community is looking for. And uh -huh. it, it, it has to be in a collaboration with the police department. I think that's, you know, what you can't do is you can't implement a police accountability board that nobody that both sides don't agree with it has to be something that's very important to to everybody and creates value and just a little snippet that i'll back up and talk about and it was a camera policy that i talked about previously that maybe not everybody saw you know in and i compliment the um the officers that are online that talked about the camera policy when you go to implement something new like that there's resistance and then you find value in it afterwards and i'm hoping for the same thing with the police accountability board there, there seems to be some level of resistance, but I hope there's value for both sides 
when we implement a police accountability board that there's definitely accountability for both sides of the, the aisle. And it provides value for everybody, not just the citizens of Geneva, but also for the police of Geneva. So that's the overall goal for us as a council. Thank you very much. Just because he called in your name specifically, I just want to make sure, Alana, is there anything else that you would like to add to that discussion? Um, no, I don't. Um, I feel like uh, like that whole process has was um, it took a long time to like even just form, and it's going to take um, it's going to take a little while to. It's a big thing that we're trying to do, um, and. Ideally, and at the end of the day, it's to make those who are not comfortable with the police comfortable with um, the decisions made by police. So um, I just like for people to be open minded about those who, and rightfully so, don't trust or don't feel comfortable around police, but would still like protection when, when needed. Um, one of the things that I think has clearly been re, uh, reiterated by all of the individuals who have shared here tonight is that once again, there are a variety of experiences within the city of Geneva. That's number one. And number two, I think the level of investment um, based on the citizens of Geneva uh, clearly seems to be at a pretty high level. People are invested in seeing some change. Um, it, the time is now 7.57. I do want to open up the floor for one more minute just to make sure that we're giving people time to contribute as they see fit, relevant to their experience with the Geneva Police Department. Is there anyone else who would like to contribute at this time before we move to our closing? I do just want to just do a quick rundown for people watching, um, just so people are aware. Obviously, we will have another session next Tuesday. Um, but for people that would like to utilize our website, um, just briefly, I am going to screen share really quick just to show. So if you go to our city page um, under police reform, there is the Policing Reform and Reinventive Collective link. If you click that, that gives um, obviously information on our collective group, all, all of the working documents, um, a rundown, all of the executive orders, but the main spot is <clears throat> the community input box. Typically, if you put your name and email and the message you would like to send, you can hit it and I will receive it. Excuse me, that is for people watching and even people that are in our um, Zoom currently that would like to comment and um, obviously not comfortable or would like to just submit it and have it read um, as I did to a couple of people tonight. But that's just another um, rundown on where that information is available, uh, working documents and um, for people that asked uh, information on the collective, the scope of what it looks like going forward our tentative schedule, our list and bios will be available as well. Thank you. I believe I saw that Alana raised her hand. Yeah, I just wanted um, to share my experience with the police. Um, I wouldn't consider myself to be a, a bad person or I just got a big mouth and I like to talk at, at times. Um, and I've always had, quote unquote, a smart mouth. Um, I, when I was younger, I just thought that was something that um, like elders would say to children to get them like, you don't talk back to adults. Um, as I grew up, um, I realized that was just me being able to express myself and speak to people who wouldn't normally um, um, it's not about giving or getting respect when you're a kid. It's just you listen and you do what you're told. Um, and being a smart mouth or someone who spoke up um, helped me and realizing that while watching, I was an observer. So watching how um, my family had interacted with the police or also how I choose to interact with the police made it very difficult for police officers in that moment to um, to handle me with care and respect. So my first interaction with a police officer that I can remember was my uncle being arrested while I was walking downtown with him. 
um, as a kid, it was myself and my cousin. Um, they just said his name. Um, he had said that is who he is. And they just took him away there. Luckily, my, um, my uncle had owned, another one of my uncles had owned a bar at that time across from the family dollar. Um, and he was there. So we ended up going into that bar. Um, and that was my first time thinking like, what happened? What, like, it wasn't my business to know, but it was my first time interacting with the police ever. Um, there were, I, there were other interactions later, but, um, I once had a party at my house or there are many parties for young kids, um, in, I guess I would say South of the tracks, uh, for kids like myself who didn't have anything to do. Geneva is pretty boring when you're a teenager, so you don't really have anything to do. So there were lots of house parties. Um, you can only keep it quiet to a certain extent, but dancing wasn't an issue. So um, I was having a party and my mom wasn't there at the time, but an officer had showed up because it was too loud. And anybody who knows my mom, she don't play that. So like drinking and all that stuff was a no-go. So there was no alcohol whatsoever. And the officer just first met me with what's happening, what's going on, and this needs to stop. Like the party needed to stop. Um, and I asked him why. Um, and he's like, there's alcohol. He saw a can in the back, in the background um, on a table. And it was not an alcohol can. I tried to explain that to him. And, it, um, and he was not trying to listen to me. So that already, um, that made me have that instilled in me that this cop or this cop isn't going to listen to me regardless of what I say, even if I'm being truthful, um, regardless if the party was too loud anyways, but him making that assumption and not willing to listen to my words, um, really upset me. Um, after that I had, and I'm, this is, this is solely when I was a teenager, again, she was boring. We were walking downtown and we're just talking to one another. Um, as we do, some of us are swearing. Um, it's never been against the law to swear. Um, and we're, we had said something, no, I had said something. Um, I, I had cursed and an officer had heard me and he, he had told me to watch my mouth. And in my mind, I don't know you, so you don't get to tell me what to do. I like, why are you telling me to watch my mouth or whatever I'm going to do what I want to do in this moment. I'm not breaking the law or anything like that. So him feeling as if he had any right to tell me what to do in that moment really upset me. So these are things that I'm learning as a kid is um, one, an officer, these are just two interactions, but there are more um, that one officers just feel like they can tell you what to do and two, they're not listening to, they're not listening to you when you're speaking, um, even if you are being truthful. And this is just as a kid. Um, some may say they're just trying to teach, uh, in that moment of me cursing, they're trying to teach me a lesson, but also was it his place to try to teach me a lesson, especially if I don't know you. Um, um, I was, as an adult, um, there have been multiple times where I've been pulled over, um, um, some rightfully so because I've, um, I've been speeding or whatever, um, whatever the case. Um, and each time the officer would come to my window, ask me for my license registration. Um, I asked what I'm being pulled over for and they would have what I would call an attitude. So I would ask them, and this is me respectfully asking, like I am very much aware of how I can be, um, of how I can be aggressive towards people, um, or when I am doing that or when I choose to, but if, um, but in that moment, when it's a police officer, I do try to be as respectful as I can. So I asked them, why are you speaking to me this way? And they took, um, the officer told me, um, why, why are you being a smart, uh, I didn't say the uh, ASS word, but why are you being a smart Alec? And right then I just, I stopped and I was not trying to cooperate in that moment because I felt like I demanded, uh, or I should be, I should get a certain level of respect because one, I don't know what I did. You didn't tell me. And two, um, and two, even if I did something wrong, why are you coming at me with such hostility or with this, this attitude? Um, so 
um, my interactions with the police have been more of a, on a level of respect and, um, or disrespect um, with their words. I've never been arrested or anything like that. But if, like many people do when they get, when they get pulled over or stopped by, by police, some of them are, like um, Ahmad had said earlier, are either going to feel intim uh, intimidated or afraid. Um, and I, sorry, I lost my train of thought, but my biggest issue is people saying that police office, like using children um, to paint this picture that police officers are great, or you can have cookies and cakes with police officers or whatever. And then when you grow up, um, they still treat they still treat you as an adult or they don't see you as that little kid anymore. So as I, as I work with children, I don't want to use them as like, oh yeah, these cops are nice because when they grow up, they may not see them the same or there'll be different police officers in that position. Um, so I just wanna share with you like my, just reasons why I don't necessarily trust police officers, but I'm willing to listen and I'm, I understand they have a job to do like many of us do, but there are certain things that happen in your life that lead you to um, viewing police officers the way that you do. Um, so that I have much more to say, but I don't wanna keep this open and long, <laughs> long. but thank you for um, letting me have the floor, but I just wanted to share with you a little bit of my experience with police. Thank you very much for your contribution. Um, Erica, is there anything else that you would like to discuss at this time before I close? No, <clears throat> just that I did enable the, um, for next Tuesday, I did enable the chat for the for the next Zoom meeting in case anybody would like to um, speak versus um, speaking live. Also, just to know um, our YouTube live um, stream has an open chat for people that would like to utilize that as well. And we can and I can definitely um, read from there. Um, other than that, go ahead, Sam. Well, um, uh, Erica, thank you very much. Um, so to everyone who has taken the time to join us tonight, we want to take the time to thank you for uh, being a part of this process. Once again, we are having another one of these, another one of these forums next week. We look forward to your contribution. Um, I do want to give a charge to the community members who have come out tonight. Encourage other people to show up next week. Um, and the reason I'm saying that is because as we're having these discussions, we wanna make sure that we're creating spaces where people can share information about their experience that can inform our process as we move forward. Once again, my name is Dr. Sim Covington. Um, and on behalf of the entire collective here, we wanna thank you for coming out tonight. Everyone have a wonderful night. Happy Veterans Day. Thank you for your service. Happy Veterans Day, everyone, yes. Happy Veterans Day.